Wisdom. Where does it come from? Wisdom is something that uh, sometimes you need to search for. Okay, we're not necessarily born with wisdom. That's why we have parents to guide us and to show us what to do and what not to do. That's why some of us believe in a God that is infinite in his wisdom. That when we pray, we ask the Lord for wisdom to show us how to handle a situation. The Bible, we can search for wisdom as well. Now, even if you are not a Christian, the Bible is chock full of nuggets that will help you in your daily life. It's not just a book of stories, it's historical in nature, and it provides some context around some of the the biggest struggles that we as humans encounter and endure. Today I wanna talk to you a little bit about wisdom and uh, the king that was the wisest king and just so happened to be the wealthiest king that the world has ever seen. We're going to talk a little bit about King Solomon's wisdom when it comes to building a life of success, building a life of happiness, building a life of abundance, and what it all means, and what's the important part, and what parts are not necessarily important, and what should we, what, what should what should we be focusing on versus uh, what we should you know kind of lay to the side and not necessarily worry about. I want to bring your attention this uh, this video to a scripture in First Kings, First Kings three. 5 verse 14 and this is when king solomon was a little boy and the lord came to him uh, and asked him and said solomon ask anything in my name and i'll give it to you he literally said whatever you want i will give it to you i'm gonna go ahead and read this Uh, if you have your bibles you can read it with me if not just just pay attention to the words that i'm reading at gideon the lord appeared to solomon during the night in a dream and god said Ask for whatever you want me to give you. Solomon answered, You have shown great kindness to your servant, my father David, because he was faithful to you and righteous and upright in in heart. You have continued his great kindness to him and have given him a son to sit on his throne this very day. He's talking about himself. Now, Lord God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David. But I am only a child, Solomon says, and I do not know how to carry out his duties. Your servant is here among the people you have chosen, a great people too numerous to count in number. So give your servant, this is where he requests wisdom right now, and he's just a little boy. He said, give your servant a discerning heart to govern your people and to distinguish between right and wrong. And he's saying, who am I, Lord? Who am I? But if you just give me wisdom... Wisdom from heaven, divine wisdom, heavenly wisdom. I'll know how to lead your people and I'll continue my father's legacy. Now, here's the cool part. The Lord said, the Lord was pleased with Solomon and what he had asked for. So God said to him, since you have asked for this and not for long life and not for wealth just for yourself, nor have asked for the death of your enemies, but instead you asked for discernment in administering justice I will do exactly what you asked for. I will give you wise and discerning heart so that there will never ever be anybody like you. Wow. Can you imagine the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, can you imagine God himself coming to you and saying, John, Mark, Sam, Kelly, Jane, Elizabeth, whatever your name is, fill in the blank. What do you want and what can I provide to you? And whatever you ask in my name, I will literally give it to you. He could have asked for the cattle on a thousand hills. He could have asked for all the gold in the world. He could have asked for all the abundance. He could have asked for long life. He could have asked for immortality. He could have asked for anything, but instead he chose to ask for wisdom. Now, this is an important lesson to learn here coming right out of the gate in the Bible. Why is wisdom more important than wealth? We're going to break that down a little bit. In the book of Ecclesiastes, Solomon, again, Solomon, the wisest king in the entire world, later on in his life, he goes through lots of ups and downs. He did not have a perfect life by any means, but he always sought the Lord and he always sought the direction and the guidance and the wisdom of the Lord. But later on in his life, after he made a whole bunch of mistakes, he came back to God 
And in Ecclesiastes, he wrote the book of Ecclesiastes. In Ecclesiastes 1, 2 verse 4, he says, meaningless, meaningless, or other translation says, vanity, vanity, utterly meaningless. Everything is meaningless. What do people gain from all their labor, which they toil under the sun? Generations come and generations go, but the earth remains the same forever. He's talking about vanity and emptiness. He's talking about everything you accumulate in life. Fancy cars and houses and big projects and tons of land, which are all good. And I don't think he's against that because he had you know, more wealth than any other king that has ever lived. He was not against it, but he looked at it at the end of his days and he said, what is it all for? Why, like we acquire all these cool things and it gives us maybe temporary happiness, but is it going to fulfill us for the rest of our life? And I've heard story after story after story of wealthy millionaires and wealthy billionaires that are still miserable and, and literally hate life, but they have everything you could ever imagine because they're, they're lacking, maybe they're lacking purpose, maybe they're lack, lacking destiny, maybe they're lacking impact, right? A mentor of mine always told me, don't go after the money, but rather go after the impact that you're going to make. If you have enough impact and if you're making enough impact on people's lives, that the money is going to end up come. Another mentor said, if you bless enough people, that blessing is going to come back to you. And the Bible talks about sowing, 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 being a sower rather than just receiving. And we know that age old adage, it's better to give than to receive. Well, that's biblical That's biblical wisdom right there. If we give enough, we're going to end up getting enough. If we help enough people, if we impact the world around us, we're going to end up impacting our own lives. Materialism and accumulation. The book also points out, Ecclesiastes also points out, that accumulating wealth and possessions for your own sake, again, is empty in vanity. Solomon's pursuit of great riches and opulence led him to realize that these endeavors do not fulfill him long term. In Ecclesiastes 5.10, he says, whoever loves money never has enough. Let's think about that for a second. If you love money, the Bible says money is not evil, but it's the love of money that is evil. Why? The love of money, the seeking, the lusting, the longing for, if you're always searching for it and running after it, what's going to happen? It's going to run away from you. Whoever loves money never has enough. Whoever loves wealth is never satisfied with their income. This too is meaningless, he says. Pleasure, pleasure, pleasure. I mean, Solomon, he had a lot of pleasure. He had lots of wives, you know. Like I said, he didn't always live a perfect life. But throughout that vein of existence, he was always seeking wisdom on how to lead God's people. Solomon's experience in seeking pleasure and indulgence also underscored the transitory nature of these pursuits. He notes that the pursuits of pleasure for its own sake can be a fruitless endeavor. Ecclesiastes 2, 1 through 11. Now check this out. It's a little long, but bear with me. We're going to come to an end here. Come on, let's test your pleasure to find out what is good. But that also proves to be meaningless. Laughter, I said, is madness. And what does pleasure accomplish? This is literally a monologue that uh, King Solomon is, is writing here. I tried cheering for myself with wine and embracing folly. My mind still guided me with wisdom. I wanted to see what was good for people to do under heaven during the few days of their lives. Verse 4 says, I undertook great projects. He, he had massive amounts of projects. I built houses for myself. I plant vineyards. I made gardens and parks and planted all kinds of fruit trees in them. I made reservoirs of water and groves of flourishing trees. I bought male and female slaves and had other slaves who bore in my house, which means created babies, had, had more babies. I also owned more herds and flocks than anyone In Jerusalem before me. He's talking about any king in Jerusalem. I amassed silver and gold for myself and the treasures of the king and providences. I acquired male and female singers and harem as well and the delight of man's heart. I became greater by far than anyone else or any other king in Jerusalem before me. 
And he says, in all this, wisdom stayed with me. He goes on to say in verse 10, I denied myself nothing my eyes desired. I refused my heart no pleasure. My heart took delight in all of my labor. And this was the reward of my toil. Yet, check this out. Yet when I surveyed all that my hands had done, everything ended up being meaningless. A chasing after the wind, nothing was gained under the sun. Can you believe this? The richest king in the entire world, with the most wisdom, he did everything his heart desired. If he saw it and he wanted it, he got it. If he thought it, he created it. If he couldn't create it, he hired somebody that could create it for him. He did everything to try to please himself or to try to even maybe please the people around him. Because when you have that man, that much wealth, of course, people are going to be attracted to you. And they're going to want you to help them fund their life or projects or whatever the case may be. So he did it all. But at the end of his life, when he was old and gray, he sat there and he asked himself, everything that I did, what was it for? What was it for? It was meaningless. And I believe at the end of his life, he had an eternal perspective. You know, so many times we acquire all these different things in life, or it's a constant struggle to try to acquire these things. And we're trying and trying and trying. And that's the key word. We are trying, 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 but we're not giving it to God, or we're not doing it for the sole reason of impacting other people. Remember, being a blessing so that you will be blessed. Now, it's not give to get, but it's a, it's a nature. It's a principle. If you give enough, you will end up getting. I believe Solomon had an eternal perspective at this point. In Ecclesiastes 3.11, he says, He has made everything beautiful in his time. He's talking about God at this point. He has also set eternity in the heart of humans. Yet no one can fathom what God has done from the beginning to end. You see, this verse suggests that God has placed this longing, this desire, this yearning for eternal things in people's hearts. The biggest question that I get sometimes, and especially when I was in ministry many, many years ago, was what am I here for? What's my purpose? And that may be an answer to a question that we can't give you in this video, but it's an answer to a question that you can definitely ask God and ask Him for. What am I here Daddy, what did you create me for? God, what, what is my purpose on life? That's a question that many, many, many people struggle with. And sometimes if you don't find that purpose, if you don't find that hope, if, you're not, if you don't find that passion in life that you believe you were created for, sometimes you feel hopeless. Sometimes you feel like, you know, what's it all for? If God came to you and said, what can I give you? If I were to give you anything in the entire world, what would you like? I want you to think about that really, really hard. Maybe you'd say wealth. Maybe you'd say money. Maybe you'd say riches. Maybe some of you would say, God, just give me wisdom. Give me wisdom on how to lead my family. Give me wisdom on how to lead my wife or my spouse. Give me wisdom on how to lead my neighborhood. Give me wisdom on how to help lead my child's school system. Give me wisdom on how to lead my town, my city, my state, my country. And I, and, I, and I challenge you today, after watching this video, ask God for wisdom and then seek it and search for it and see where you can obtain that wisdom, whether it's books, whether it's people you surround yourself with, or whether it's events you tend. Seek wisdom. Seek to be a better person. Seek to be a better husband, father, brother, mother, sister, daughter. And I promise you, God will end up giving you that wisdom. And when you find that wisdom and you find that passion, and you're able to turn that passion into something that will bless other people's lives, I promise you the riches will come. So with that being said, guys, I appreciate you watching this video. Make sure you click that thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe. And if you found this uh, video valuable and you learned something, go ahead and let me know in the comments. Give me your opinion. Do you think it's better to ask for riches or do you think it's better to ask for wisdom? And if you believe it's better to ask for wisdom, drop the word wisdom down in the comments so I know that you agree. Until the next video, make sure you live well, laugh loud, and learn to be a better you.